Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the Gaussian blur effect in Adobe After Effects. So go ahead and open up Adobe After Effects and get some footage in there so you can see how this works. So to find it, you can go to Effects and Presets, go to Blur and Sharpen, and go down to Gaussian Blur. You can, of course, search that right here, or you can go into Effect, and then it'll be right under Blur and Sharpen as well. Gaussian Blur is a simple blur that is, it blurs using the Gaussian method, which um, Gaussian is a type of normal distribution in math, so it's, it's, it's a mathematical formula of blurring. It does it in a uniform way, so it can create some really nice blurs. So if you see, um, it's a very simple interface right here, just really two switches with a third one. Um, if you blur too much, if you see right here, the edges will start to disappear because it's running out of things to, um, as it blurs, it kind of flattens things out over the image, and this can actually grab from the edge pixels so they actually disappear. So you can just click Repeat Edge Pixels, and it'll just, basically it just guesses by what is on the edge previously. So if you see, it sees that there's a red beam here. If we go back to zero, um, it sees that a, a red beam is kind of going to the side here. So repeat edge pixels will kind of repeat that in a blurred fashion. Great to, to use and so you don't have you know those disappearing edges. Now right here you have just three switches Horizontal and vertical means it's just a normal blur. Everything blurs equally. Horizontal means that you're blurring in the complete horizontal direction, and it completely changes the feel of the blur. Now it's sort of a motion blur. Kind of looks weird if you're um, going like this, but it almost looks like a dream state, too. So this is kind of a cool effect for that. You could uh, even back it off a little bit so it can actually be visible, um, and you can get a, a pretty cool effect through going just horizontal. Uh, another one is vertical, and this one makes it kind of disorienting as you go through. And of course, these blurs aren't usually meant to be applied to entire clips unless you're going for a very, you know, stylistic blur like a dream sequence or disoriented first person view sort of sequence. Some of the stuff you can do with it, um, it has a couple main purposes. One of them is just to create a uniform blur that looks pretty nice um, for certain effects or for certain parts of the footage that you maybe want to add this blur to. One of the other things that it can do is it can remove grain in on the, you know, a sort of loss of quality way, but maybe it works for the footage. So, for example, this one, if you see when we play this, fit to 100% right here. If you see when we play this, the grain is pretty intense throughout the center here. And it can actually be kind of distracting. This scene, however, it's got big enough objects that losing a ton of detail isn't the worst thing in the world. So if we wanted to add a quick gloss and blur, maybe bring it up to five here. You can see that it's a very slight change, but we actually regain um, a little bit more focus on the center piece just because those those pieces of grain aren't so sharp. You bump it up any more than that and you actually do start to have a really blurred effect to it. But you can kind of get away to almost up to seven and the footage still looks fine for as fine as this low quality footage can look. But you kind of remove some of that distraction. So that's one of the uses it can be used for. The other is the stylistic sort of way. So like if we, for example, went into, let's say, this one. And so this is just a scene of um, kind of looking out a bus window here. But maybe we could make this look a little bit a little bit cooler with Gaussian Blur. So if we duplicate this layer, Control-D, and then create a mask here. And we're going to want to mask out everything in the center right about there. Subtract so we're only grabbing the edges. And then if we add our Gaussian Blur to this and go maybe just horizontally and add a nice blur there, make it a really intense blur on the edges, which you can see almost makes that tree disappear. So what we need right here is a very good feather now. So like a really far feather. So it almost touches the center of the screen. So as you get to the closer to the edge, it blurs more. And as you get closer to the center, it blurs less. And this, it's a very subtle effect. 
but it kind of focus your, focuses your eyes to the center. And even though all the footage is blurry, since we blurred the edges, it actually makes the center look a lot clearer. And it makes the footage overall look a lot clearer. And it kind of cool um, adds a, a, like a dirty sort of lens to the edges. If you notice, it kind of feels like you're looking through a lens now instead of just the camera being like the omniscient omnipotent viewer sort of thing. So it's a really cool effect in that sense. Let's see without it here. With it, just chuck the edges right there. All it's doing is blurring the edges up just a little bit so that we kind of have a cooler view of motion. Now if you want vertical on here, I don't know how that would work. Let's see. That actually has a really neat um, blurry lens effect as well. Now it really looks like you're looking through the, the lens of a camera, especially with this little camera lens reflection right here. So yeah, that could add a really cool point of view effect to it. So that's the basics of Gaussian Blur. Gaussian Blur is a great blur to know and a great blur to apply to your footage whenever you need a good uniform blur. It has a couple different sort of things that you can do with it, but at the end of the day, it's just a blur and should be used accordingly. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Uh, subscribe for more Adobe related videos. And until next time guys, see ya.